Hey guys, welcome to this channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at GPT for all, but a proper installer in the local. A few days back when this model came out by Nomic AI, we went through this whole process of running this GitHub repository, downloading the model and then running it in our system. Since then, a lot of things have happened. Auto GPT came out, Agent GPT came out, Baby AGI came out, and a lot of models had come out. One thing similar across all, across all of these models was that they were very hard to kind of adopt because you had to go through the process of cloning them running your Python script in order to install modules or libraries, which may not be suitable. The great thing now is that the GPT for all model is now a no code setup where you can basically install it like any other software in your computer, right? So uh, in order to set this up, just click on Windows installer or whatever you're using, right? So if you're using Linux or Mac OS, go ahead and choose those options. Here's a quick note, right? So after downloading, you run the installer, pay close attention to installation location as you'll need to navigate to that folder after it's completed. No brainer. Once the installation is finished, it, the, the application will be in the .bin folder. Now you'll get this warning when it's being downloaded primarily because um, I don't think they went through a lot of publisher steps in order to, pub before they published it. So just do this and say keep. It'll save it in your computer. So here's where you, you'll, you'll find uh, the setup, right? In your download folder. Just run it. Um, again, basic setup, right? So choose the location where you want this to be. Do next, next, until you come to a point where the setup starts. And note that setup kind of takes its own sweet time. So I've already installed it. I'm not installing it again, but it takes around 10, 20 minutes to set it up, depending on your local drive. So yeah, um, once the setup is completed, Let's continue. Apparently it took its own sweet time, but now the installation is ready and we can actually test how it works, right? So in order to test it out, just go to bin uh, in the folder you've installed and then open chat.exe. This will open a screen like this. And if the, you can see this at this point, everything is set up correctly. You can start using the model in your local. What I've done is I've created five test prompts that I'm going to be testing out. So let's say the first prompt is write a story on a panda taking a train ride. So let's start. So let's see how long that takes. So it's writing the story. Obviously it's faster than the one that I had used before. Now note this works on your CPU. So it's consuming your CPU power to write the story for you, right? So once upon a time, the bustling city of Shanghai, there was a pande. So yeah, that's, that's wrong. Who had just arrived from the north. The pande was a wise and gentle creature. So maybe he, it just went ahead and named the animal or did I, yeah, mine was right. So it looks like it named the animal. All in loneliness, the train rode through the city. Again, this is a very small model compared to that of say chat GPT, GPT-4 or Llama. So note that this is not going to be so great, but remember that this is open source and this is free. Meaning that you can take it anywhere you want in your system without paying a single dollar to use the product. Obviously, you'll incur your own electricity charges and stuff, but that's a different story, right? So it's a pretty detailed story uh, compared to the size of the model, right? So it's just two, three GBs. The story it's kind of writing, it's very detailed. Let's see. So there are two more features here. Obviously this one resets the chat. This one copies it, I guess. You click here, nothing happens. Anyway, so the story is ready now, right? So you can see uh, it was able to put the whole story just like chat GPT is as an option to regenerate the response. Go ahead and try it out if necessary. And if you look through the story, right? So it's not bad compared to, uh, you know, at least given the fact that it's a free model, it's a great, uh, it's done a good job. Let's try another question. What is rocket? What is rocket science for beginners? So yeah, it went ahead and smartly answered. It cannot answer me this question. <laughs> It says that it's science fiction term used in movies to describe something out of the ordinary or difficult to understand. It's when died and rocket science refers to... I'm not convinced with this answer because it's not giving me simple explanation. Rather, it's saying that there are many online courses in order to learn rocket science concept. Yeah, let's try one more. Explain the concept of inheritance in programming with some code examples. Again, it's not able to answer this question for me. But it's trying, right? So it's saying in object oriented programming allows to inherit properties and methods from parent class achieved by declaring a subclass in the declaration statement. So it's saying parent class and then it's saying class child class, which is inherited by the parent class. Writing code, obviously it's not perfect, but given this is a local model running on your CPU, I, I wouldn't say it's a bad, I wouldn't say it's doing a bad job. Note that it takes some time, but given that it's a free model, obviously there'll be, obviously it will take some time in order to process your responses. It's done, let's try two more questions. So now we're gonna be generating a video script for a video talking about GPT for all. I don't think it should be able to answer it, but let's see, because I don't think it will have knowledge about 
GPT for all. Yeah, one thing I've noticed that for every question you'll go ahead, almost every question, I think it's been fourth question and this is the third question is saying that you cannot answer this. So yeah, this goes on to say how little data set is used in order to train this. I'm going to say GPT for all is an open source conversational AI chatbot. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to move on to the next one. I'm going to say write a poem on the adventures of a sloth. Let's see what it throws out. Yeah, this is the fourth time it's saying it cannot answer or write poems or write anything at this point. Let's fine tune the prompt. Sloth on a burning train, it's still not able to answer it. So yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time at this point uh, because I was able to give you an understanding on what it can and cannot do. Now, depending on the use case, you may want to fine tune your prompt better so that it understands how to answer these questions. What I had noticed that when, when it was on a command line, it was able to answer more questions, but it, right now it's not able to kind of give you answers for certain questions. It's not not usable. It's definitely something you can give it, you can give a shot, but it's not there yet, right? So you check out my other video on Llama, which is way more accurate and better than this. So yeah, and that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Thank you so much.